guys, Wood Craftsman here, and uh, I get a, quite a few questions as far as how I mount drawer fronts and what way I foam best. And uh, I'm just uh, towards the end of a big house here. It's a full kitchen, three bathrooms, and a laundry. And uh, just mounting the uh, drawer fronts here so I can get the cabinet sent out um, so you can get them installed here. But um, a lot of people have been asking. Um, you know, I've seen some of your videos in the past. It looks like you have some type of a shop made jig. Is there any details on it? Well, basically, I've made it, and I'll show you here shortly, but I basically made a jig that references off of one side and the bottom um, on both the drawer front and the drawer box itself. And then, um, you know, if you have your guides and everything put in correctly, they should need very, very little adjustment. So, I'm going to kind of go through that right now. Um, I just got done doing this cabin here. I've got a three drawer stack I need to do yet, so I will kind of take you through that process. So let me get rid of this cabinet. Okay, so I've taken the time to make sure that all these guides are in here parallel and that they're basically level. I mean, what I mean by level is level with the floor of the cabinet. The uh, floor of the cabinet should be uh, square with the tops and bottoms being that the parts were cut square. So if you're off a little bit, there's quite a bit of adjustment in the drawer guides itself. Now the drawer guides I'm using are Bloom Tandem. Um, these are the 563 F series. The 563 F series, basically it's the same thing as the 562, but they've got a couple uh, modifications that they added uh, to basically help out with uh, further installation issues and kind of more so for inset applications. So let me bring the camera a little closer and I'll show you briefly what the 563 is all about. Okay, the biggest difference between the 562 and the 563F is if you look at the slotted hole, whoops, right there where it kind of covers the face room and the interior of the cabinet, basically it's about two hole widths. And that's probably the biggest change I found in the... Uh, um, in the drawer guides themselves. Uh, basically it allows for a horizontal adjustment within the cabinet. Uh, probably really preferable for inset cabinetry. Um, so between um, the uh, horizontal adjustment in the locking devices that you can purchase and then the horizontal adjustment in the guides, uh, you've got quite a bit of flexibility for inset uh, applications. So. Um, the 563 F series is a 100 pound uh, load rating and the 569, uh, I believe it's F again, is um, I believe it's a 125 pound load rating. So I pretty much use 563 all the way around. So. So as you can see, I've got all the guides mounted. Uh, I made the inside of the cabinet flush with the face frame for easy mounting, and I just uh, screw to the side panels. So, so that's kind of real basic for mounting the guides. But let's talk a little bit more about the jig. Okay, so this is the jig itself. It's nothing more than a piece of plywood with a couple pieces of hardwood uh, screwed down to it at a 90 degree angle. And I've got a, just a couple pieces of quarter inch plywood screwed to the top. Now this originally was referencing for my original drawer slides, which was the Bloom side mount 230MB epoxy coated um, drawer slides. But since then I've kind of adapted to make it work with other drawer slides. So basically, to understand how this works is this lip on top of this quarter inch plywood is actually your reference, there's two reference points. There's a reference point for your drawer front, and then there's a reference point for your drawer box. And to come up with this, you need to know what your distances are as far as your side clearance and your bottom clearance, because I'm referencing from the bottom. In my case here, um, the Bloom Tandem 530 or 563F um, is a 916th difference from the bottom of the uh, drawer guide or, or the cabinet to the bottom of the drawer box. Now I also have a half inch overlay on the bottom, so I need an inch and a sixteenth from the bottom of the drawer front to the bottom of the drawer box. And at the same time, my drawer box is uh, 
seven sixth. It's just use a, a round number, a half inch smaller than the opening. So I basically need um, the equivalency approximately. This number comes out to me for eleven sixteenth strong from the edge of the drawer front to the edge of the drawer box. So once again, I'm using shim. So to do that, I need to put a shim inside underneath the slip. And then I need to use these two shims on top. Now the reason I need to use those on top is I already have my um, locking devices mounted. And I use the uh, vertical mounting ones, so therefore they mount on the bottom edge of the drawer box. I need to have clearance for that. So basically I'm just using a shim that holds this drawer box off of this um, little ledge here and gives you the appropriate distance. I've also taken the time to locate these uh, holes for the drawer front. That's kind of something you kind of want to figure out on your own, but basically um, you want to make these so that they're in the meat of your drawer front. If you have a five piece raised panel, you want to make sure that you're in the meat of the raised panel, or if you can, get in the meat of the styles and rails. Um, Flat panel is a little different. I won't really even cover that today. I'll cover that maybe on a, a job where I've got a flat panel. But for now, I'm just kind of basically going over how this jig works and how everything is mounted. Now, these screw holes or these holes that drill, they're actually a little large. They're 5 sixteenths. Reason being is I actually use a screw that is specifically um, dedicated and designed for mounting drawer fronts. And what this will do is once I get the screw in here, I have, if I get the screw hole in the center, I have a lot of adjustment that I can move the drawer front around if need be. So it's a little bit overkill to a certain extent, but the screw head still covers up because it's got this big washer head on it. So it gives you the idea for flexibility. And the repeatability of this jig is pretty high providing that you get your drawer guides in your cabinet mounted correctly so okay so I'm basically just going to screw this drawer front to or screw this drawer front to this drawer and it's going to kind of go right through the sequence so here's my five piece drawer front made right here in house this is actually a custom design I actually had to have this raised panel cutter made um, for me to match the doors and it's actually a, an insert raised panel head. I'll have a separate video out on that. But basically this is a five piece drawer front and I want to put this in face down but I also want the bottom edge up against this fence here. So I want this to be the bottom. I've kind of laid these out already so I'm going to put this like this. Make sure that you have no dust on here. Last thing you want to do is screw up your finish. So push up against, and now remember I have this little shim in here as well to give me the appropriate overlay from left to right. Slide it over. Okay, now the drawer front is positioned. The next thing to do is set the drawer box on top. The drawer box slides up against this side right here. Nice and tight. And I use these two quarter inch spacers to hold the drawer away from this ledge here. So I'm up against, I'm against this ledge right here. Got a gap here for some reason, but I'm referencing here, so that's good. And I am referencing up against this piece of plywood here and this shim. Same thing on that side. So now the drawer itself has the appropriate overlay on this side and the bottom. And in a perfect world, this dimension is going to be exactly the same as this dimension. But that all basically depends on how your drawer fronts and your doors finish out to size. So next thing I'm going to do is take a, I'm going to use a uh, 
drill with a Vix bit. Now the screws I'm using are self-tapping, but what I like about the Vix bit is it gives me a better chance of getting a, a starting point right in the center of these holes. So that way if I do need to adjust it, I still have the availability to do that. So, all right. Okay, so five piece drawer front, the bottom edge, up against the shim on this side. Holes pre drilled. Shim. Shim. drawer front. Now, okay, so the one thing I'm not going to get too excited is, let me uh, bring you in here. If you look at it, it looks to be that uh, one of them is crooked, and uh, let's see here. could be this one. It's this one here. It looks to be it's out of whack a little bit, and uh, just sighting down here, it looks to be that it's twisted. So if I wanted to, I could adjust this ever so slightly just by pulling on it. And uh, let's see here. Okay. And then I also have a side adjustment here. Uh, let's see. Okay. The middle drawer is a little bit slightly out of whack, but here's the one thing I'm not going to totally rely on yet. Um, that cabinet might not be sitting level, which I'm pretty sure it's not. It's just sitting on a, a roller cart, a uh, four-wheel dolly. I will make the final adjustment after the cabinets are set in place. I might do some slight tweaking in between the um, latching devices, which have a side to side adjustment, and then also the rear of the drawer guide. You can uh, tweak it up and down, and you can also adjust the drawer uh, front, the, dr the front of the drawer up and down as well. And then you can also adjust the drawer front. So I may need to slightly tweak that. Uh, for some reason, that one is slightly out of, out of whack. I'm not sure why. Uh, this one here. This is the first one you saw me put in at the beginning of the video, and that one's as square as could be. So, um, it works. 
pretty repetitively 95% of the time, but uh, I did notice that that one drawer uh, as well um, had a, uh, um, looks to be the drawer itself wasn't square, so there could be an issue going on there. I could flip-flop the two drawers around as well, but for the most part, this is pretty repeatable. And like I said, I'm not going to get too excited about the one drawer. It's slightly crooked because it could be that the cabinet itself is just not sitting right. Uh, or it could be one of the guides is slightly off. So um, I will do that final adjustment around the final walkthrough um, when the, once the cabinets are set. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it's maybe not as inf informational as maybe what it could be. But at the same time, I'm really trying to get some, some stuff done here. I really need to get this job done. Um, contractors in our uproar with all the subcontractors including us and uh, just uh, not a good deal and it's nothing that we did wrong here it's just that it's kind of the way he is I guess so he doesn't have that great of a reputation I'm finding out so anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video questions and positive comments are welcome thanks for watching